And I would like to welcome everybody to CRAP Conversations with Road Reaction People. And today uh, we have a special treat. We have David Williams with us, who is the executive director of the Big Red Barn. Let me read a little bit about David. Uh, he's originally from Rhode Island, recently retired from the U.S. Army as a colonel with over 25 years of service. And prior to becoming the executive director of the Big, Bar Big Red Barn Retreat in August of 2022, his last position in the military was as a military instructor teaching strategy and operational planning at the Joint Forces Staff College, National Defense University in Norfolk, Virginia. Colonel Williams has over 15 years of experience as a strategist and operational planner. He was also air, both airborne and ranger qualified and received the Legion of Merit and two bronze stars amongst numerous military awards and recognitions. David graduated from the Citadel in 1997, so you can figure out how old he is very easily, and with a degree in political science. He also has two master's degrees, one from Webster University in Human Resources, and another from the School of Advanced Military Studies in Operational Art and Science. David's been married since 1997 to Stacey Brazil Williams from Elgin. They have three wonderful children, Emma, 19, Mason, 17, and Brianne, 13. And they currently reside in Columbia, South Carolina. And David is going to talk to us today about the Big Red Barn Retreat. And with that, David, you're on. Right. Thank, thank you for the introduction. I, I appreciate the opportunity to do this uh, for the Big Red Barn. So thanks to you and Mary for uh, reaching out to the Big Red Barn and, and having the opportunity to, to inform um, your members uh, about what we do here in uh, Blythewood. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, push these slides. Hopefully everything will... We'll move and um, all right, just gotta do the thing. So I'm gonna say what the, what the Big Red Barn is first and give you a little history of it. It was started back in 2014 uh, by Barbara Irons and her daughter, daughter Sutton Shaw uh, in honor of their husband and father who had passed away in 2009. And they, you know, they, they, they really struggled with the, with the sudden departure and uh, they used equine therapy and their horses to really come over some of the the difficulties of the loss um, of their loved one. And they decided a few years later to, to build uh, the 75 acre retreat right here in Blythewood uh, in honor of him. He was, in the, he was in the Navy before, but helping veterans and first, later first responders struggling with post-traumatic stress. So here in the 75 acres, um, we have a nice, we actually have a big red barn with horses in it. We have a log cabin, uh, we just recently build, built a garage that we're using for a very nice garage that we're building, uh, utilizing for yoga and uh, Tai Chi and other physical exercises. We have about five, five miles of wooded trails with horse pastures. And it's a real peaceful place. And we're proud to say that we're only one of the nine locations in the country that offer the Warrior Path program. And I'll talk a bit more in detail about that in, in a few other slides. But that, that is probably the flagship of the Big Red Barn. And the great thing about all, everything we do here, we're a nonprofit. Uh, every, everything is free uh, for veterans and first responders uh, to utilize our services. So, you know, there's, there's no catch. You know, they, they come in, they can sign up at our website and utilize uh, the facilities, or they can apply for our Warrior Path program, but again, no cost. So obviously we're a nonprofit and we do a, a lot of other things to help uh, raise the funds required, but it's, it's great uh, to do this. I just started two and a half months ago. Um, at, I retired in the army as Lewis Ann in uh, this summer, and I feel like I'm uh, serving here, continuing to serve and help veterans out again, 25 years in, I did uh, 40 months in Iraq over three different tours, uh, 2003 and four, 2007 and eight during the surge. And then most recently in uh, 2021 up in the Iraqi Kurdistan region. So it feels good to give back to veterans. And my dad was a first responder. He was a firefighter. I'm originally from Rhode Island. And he was a firefighter for 35 years. And uh, he saw a lot of trauma as well, a lot of self-medication, kind of growing up with that, uh, made childhood a bit difficult. Uh, but now looking back and, and going through uh, some of the, the programs that we offer here and learning about, you know, I think he was, he was, he's really struggling with post-traumatic stress. And I think a lot of people think of just veterans having that. And that's one thing I really like about the Big Red Barn is that we open it up to first responders here to utilize all our services because they're they're suffering as well, um, especially over the last couple of years uh, with COVID 
and you know, indirectly and indirectly, everything going on with, with the riots and the other challenges and the isolation that was a lot of law enforcement personnel were experiencing. Um, it just it just makes it great that, that we can help those veterans, those first responders out as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about the programs that we offer in a second here. So this next slide here, uh, on the left of the sli slide is a former, you know, retired command sergeant major Lamont Christian. He was the former head uh, of the drill sergeant academy at Fort Jackson, and he was the post command sergeant major a few years ago before he went through. Uh, this program and became the lead for the Warrior Path program. So he's got about five or six uh, path guides, a mix of male and female, and uh, all, um, all of them are veterans. So we do have one uh, former police officer who's also a member of his team. And again, I'll talk a little bit, a lot more about the Warrior Path program. So that's that's one side of the house under, we call him Chris. Um, and then on the right is uh, Stephanie. Uh, she runs all of our other programs that we offer, um, the, and I'll talk a bit more about that as well. So those are the two kind of pieces that we have. And so the Warrior Path program, it's very popular. It's backlog. It takes a few months uh, to sign in, uh, you, know, you know, go through the application process and then come. But it, it's, it's backlog because it works, and it's, it's a very successful program. And then our services that we offer, again, they're, they're open almost all the time. Um, to helping people out. And those, those services can be utilized both before they go to Warrior Path or after. And again, they're open to, the, to everyone here. So I'm gonna go a little more detail about each one of these here. So the services available, so Stephanie's side of the house here, um, we have a peer-to-peer -peer coffee group. It meets on Fridays at 9.30. And if anybody out there is a veteran or first responder who would like to come, and here in Blythewood, uh, every Friday at 9.30 to 11.30, we do offer that. That's kind of our entry level way into the Big Red Barn. Just kind of check it out and, and see what we're all about and walk around. And those are facilitated by people who have gone through our Warrior Path program. So they're not path guides that teach Warrior Path, but they're, they're folks like myself. I've been through the Warrior Path uh, program at a different location in Arkansas um, just, just before starting this job. And uh, they're great facilitators of our coffee group. And we just established a recent combat veterans um, group as well that meets on Monday evenings. So, and it's great. Uh, people bring their service dogs in there and you know, they talk for an hour and usually go for a walk uh, out in some of our trails. And it, it's just a great, great thing we have that's free and get to meet other people and just kind of help slowly integrate people and utilize our services. And again, so I've been active duty for 25 years. Um, I didn't know, I, I heard about people struggling. I'm very aware of the very high suicide rate among veterans, but I really, honestly, I had no idea how many veterans were, were, were really suffering, like not leaving the house um, until I started this job. And I think COVID probably made that worse with some of the anxiety about leaving the house. But we've had plenty of parents, uh, spouses calling, hey, I, you know, I want my, you know, want my husband or my son, He's, you know, suffers from, from PTSD. Uh, we, we'd like to have him utilize some of your services. And um, that's where we first point him to our website, but I encourage them, hey, come to our peer-to-peer -peer coffee group. So that is the real way to really learn more about the program and what we do here is that coffee group. The next thing there is the equine assisted psycho, uh, psychotherapy and learning. This was the original program. So it's from 2014 until 2020, that's when we started the Warrior Path program. This was the main effort. This was, you know, our main thing we did at the Big Red Barn um, was working with horses. And you've asked me a year ago, I had no idea, and some of you might have worked with horses, I had no idea how spiritual uh, horses were, how much they can read people. And um, it's just amazing what I've learned about uh, horses. So the equine assisted therapy is run by Stephanie. She is a mental health uh, therapist. And she does that with another person who's familiar with horses and, and usually can intern and in, in learning about mental health. So the two of them will go out with one person and they'll walk around the pastures here. And uh, it's an eight week long program, uh, one day a week. And they just come in and, and go through that for a few hours. And that's, that's a great program that we'd like to refer people to while they're waiting to go to Warrior Path or coming after it. The next thing we do is the art and music therapy. So we've been offering this once a year is an eight week long program as well. Music therapy is going on right now. Um, and those are, art therapists and music therapists. And we have 
co-facilitators then for people who have been through our warrior path program help with that um, but it's that really helps people out uh, in some great programs that we've reached out to the local um, you know music therapists and art therapists in the Columbia community to help us out with that uh, the next thing is there is yoga so we offer yoga um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and Tai Chi on Wednesdays. So every week we do these uh, programs in the evening, all for free, and uh, people can sign up online and come out and utilize those services. And our instructors, they've all uh, been trained on how to deal with uh, veterans with post-traumatic stress, and they've incorporated some of those, those practices into those, that, that training that, that occurs there. And um, always looking for more people to come out. And, and this is the one we do open for family members. So it's not just the veteran or first responder. Um, if they want to bring their spouse or they want to bring their children, we, we do uh, encourage that as well. The next one is meditation training. This is probably, a, you know, a, a different and alternative than, than a lot of, uh, of our other programs. We do offer this every about quarterly. It's called Transcendental Meditation. And we, we do offer it in the Warrior Path program and I go through it as well. Uh, but it's just a, a real way to take a, a, a 20 minutes of, of just meditation and um, getting a lot off there, you know, just letting the mind run loose there and relaxing. And uh, it, it's, it's a very good program that we encourage people going through Warrior Path to, to go to try um, at least twice a day. And then some people have some problems with it. It's not like a religious thing uh, that, that we're teaching here. It's, it's just this form of meditation. And some people do have issues with it. And there are a lot of Christians after they come through our program. So, so some people just, re, you know, recite a Bible verse for a few, you know, for while they're going through this 20 minutes uh, a day of going through this uh, meditation. The next thing we do is uh, farm to table cooking classes. Uh, we just started this up, received a grant um, for our, both our garden and a farm to table program. So we're growing, we just started growing vegetables that will last the winter here in South Carolina um, that we'll use to feed our water path folks. And then every month we have a, a farm to table uh, class that we put on. One of our path guides is a, not only is a former, you know, veteran 82nd Airborne Ranger guy, but he's also a chef and he loves to cook. And we just started this program and it's pretty terrific that we can do this farm to table program. And then another thing is, is the gardening itself. So we do offer opportunities uh, to come to the garden. It's pretty therapeutic just to, you know, work and, you know, get your hands dirty and, and grow uh you know with the, the veg vegetables and, and fruits in, in our garden we have here on site and then a big one there in bold is, is volunteering um you know we we take we like to take groups both individuals and groups and help out with the water path program in the kitchen we do it's a resident course the water path so it's seven days um in resident here three meals a day so i was looking for help individual help with volunteers uh in the kitchen with that and then we do group volunteer efforts as well with resetting the cabin uh, after a grad, uh, the graduation, after a seven-day program, or if there's some of, some of the work that needs to be done on our seven, 75 acre um, retreat here. So those are the real you know, overview of the services. Again, all free, all open to first responders and veterans, and then some of them being open to family members. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about uh, past and struggle well and post-traumatic growth training. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of history of that. So, because a year ago, and I've never even heard of the term post-traumatic growth, and a lot of you have probably never even heard that term. Everybody's heard about post-traumatic stress disorder, and we don't like to use the word disorder here. Uh, we call it post-traumatic stress. It's not, um, it's not, we don't want to look like it's something that's wrong with you. It's really what happened to you. So we don't use that term disorder. And um, but this looks at growing from trauma and becoming the best version of yourself and living your best life. So Warrior Path, uh, PATH stands for Progressive and Alternative Training for Helping Heroes. Um, and it was designed by warriors for warriors. So none of my PATH guides in the, in the Warrior Path program are mental health therapists like Stephanie is on the other side there. We're all veterans and first responders. Um, none of us have doctorates and mental health or anything like that, but we've all been, through, we've all suffered trauma and we've all been through um, this program ourselves and a lot of training to become a, a PATH guide. Um, so it is an intensive program and we don't call it therapy, we call it training. So, you know, that all of us have been through a lot of training and some of those training, you know, you know, being hyper vigilant and alert and all that, that we went through, you know, coming into the military, 
are the same things that some of our symptoms are from post-traumatic stress of, you know, hypervigilant, you know, going to a restaurant and making, you know, making sure you get a face that you can see who's coming through the door. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things being hypervigilant that that's a symptom of post-traumatic stress, but it's also just a result of our training. So we go through this training and it starts at 630 in the morning and runs to about 830 at night around a campfire. So, you know, just kind of grab and control the morning with, with exercise and, you know, a daily gratitude. And then a full day, about 75% of it is in a classroom, but the other 25% is outdoors from archery to working with the horses, equine therapy, to walking in our trails, our paths. Um, but it's a, it is a terrific course. I went through the course myself uh, just back in um, early August before taking this job on August 15th. I went through a two week program and it was, uh, you know, I, I did not suffer a lot from, from my tours, uh, but it just, it, I mean, it just made me a better person and uh, it, it has given me a lot of tools and practices. My wife's happy that I went through. I'm happy that I went through and uh, it's just a great course. And then we also offer some other, I'm going to go a little bit more detail about what post-traumatic growth is in a minute, but we also offer uh, Struggle Well. So this is a new pilot program uh, that, that is coming out it's in the pilot phase. And we do this with Lexington County. Uh, Leon Lott is a, is a, um, a huge supporter. He sent, he took 20 police officers off the street and put them through five days of our classroom training. And then next week did the same thing. So he put 40 officers through and it is just a, a great course. He's a huge fan and it helped a, helped a lot of folks. I think we're giving back to the, I like giving back to the community, uh, police with more empathy, uh, more understanding uh, that respond to situations rather than react to situations. And that is a, a, a common problem is we you know, quickly just react to, to, an, to an action or something that happens. But our course focuses on you know, taking a breath and responding to what happened rather than just reacting to it. So I think that's a real future. The way ahead of the Big Red Barn is working with first responders through our Struggle Well uh, programs that we can offer, you know, throughout the Columbia, throughout the state, uh, we could travel out and conduct these classroom trainings. And then post-traumatic growth training, uh, we could also kind of give an overview and, and the concepts between Water Path, Struggle Well, and post-traumatic growth training are really the same. So we can just take a few modules out of, uh, we got 52 modules in Water Path and just taking some of those out, putting in a day long classroom environment or a two day long environment or, or five day package uh, that we can offer. And we recently went to the Lexington and Richland counties uh, for their ARP, uh, American Relief uh, Act, money the COVID dollars and saying, hey, you know, if, if you give us a grant, um, we will put your first responders through our programs and you know we're going to hand you back better better officers better police officers firefighters dispatchers uh 9 11 you know type dis the dispatchers and we even do uh, the prison uh, guard folks so hey we're going to hand you back stronger people it's going to help your retention rates um you're going to have more empathy uh from a lot of these police officers on the street and your, your citizens might notice and, uh, we, and we know they're struggling. Like I talked about, COVID has made a huge impact on the, um, the first responder community over the last few years. So I'm glad we have the opportunity to, to do that. And Russell, not just for the, um, the first responders, but with our active duty folks at Fort Jackson, we're trying to get those day long retreats. We used to do them a couple of years ago, but COVID disrupted that. We're trying to get those restarted with some of the drill sergeants at Fort Jackson and bring them for out for one day retreats as well out here. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about you know, the theory and the history behind post-traumatic growth. So um, Dr. Tedeschi up at the UNC Charlotte uh, in the early 90s and kind of finished the work in, in 1995, uh, he worked on, he, he coined the term post-traumatic growth and he studied people who had, you know, adults who had lost children or had suffered disabilities in adulthood. Um, and really just like, why do some of these folks are kind of growing, are, are really doing well, struggling well with, with what had happened to him and had a greater sense of purpose and emotional depth and wisdom than they had before those losses or trauma that happened to him. And he also studied um, some of the, the POWs from the Vietnam War and the Hanoi Hilton. Um, you know, you might've heard of John McCain and Admiral Stockdale who have gone, went through the Hanoi Hilton. Guys have spent years in POW camps getting uh, tortured. And when they came out, they said, they told all the family members of those folks, like, hey, 80% of them are probably going to be complete, you know, complete train wrecks, you know, post-traumatic stress. They're, and the, the number was only 4%. Uh, 
of it's, it's amazing. And some of those guys, as we all know, went on to be senators, run for president, um, Fortune 500 companies. So I did a lot of studies into that group of people. And uh, there's, there's a whole book on it. Um, I think the Hanoi Hilton, Letters from the Hanoi Hilton, it's really good um, information on, you know, what characteristics made that group uh, come out stronger after spending, some of them spent seven, eight years in, in the POW thing, POW camp. So <clears throat> he studied that and came up with the term post-traumatic stress, stress. And then in 2014, there's an organization up in Virginia called Boulder Crest. And as a former EOD, Explosive Ordinance Disposal um, guy, veteran up there, he's trying to help a lot of uh, EOD folks who have been, you know, been injured uh, or had issues with PTSD coming out of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Those are the guys that defuse the bombs on the side of the road. So every time we're driving around, we see a bomb, we call the EOD guys out. And they, they've, you know, huge, huge casualties they've suffered over the last, you know, 20 years in the EOD community. So in 2014, he had some land and he had a lot of different nonprofits out there. Uh, and he's trying to help these guys out coming through and the nonprofits would, would come through and try to, you know, offer this or offer that. And he realized, you know, some are good, some aren't that good. Uh, but he finally linked up in 2014 with Dr. Tedeschi from UNC Charlotte and came, you know, across the post-traumatic growth uh, philosophy and designed a training program with Dr. Tedeschi uh, that they began up in Boulder Crest, Virginia back in 2014. And they, that really took off and expanded. And Big Red Barn was selected to be one of nine locations uh, throughout the country uh, to offer the Warrior Path program. And all nine locations, we were backlogged for months uh, trying to get folks through this program. So it, we were just at a conference recently, uh, we called it catastrophic success. It's like we were so successful, but now we're backlogged, uh, you know, months trying to get people through our programs. And that's one of the things like about Big Red Barns that we offer other services where some of these other nine locations uh, don't offer other services in the meantime. Um, so the Big Red Barn Heart, it started in 2019. It built that cabin you can see on the top right. Um, again, all the, the money was donated from Barbara Irons in-kind donations to build the cabin uh, and all the facilities here. So all the nonprofit money we raise goes to the programs uh, that we offer. So our first class was in the middle of COVID in 2020 after the barn was completed in 2019, 2020. And then we've, so we've been doing the Warrior Path since. So I'm going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> Warrior Path here for a second. So we do surveys um, when people apply the day they come in, the day they leave, and then 90 days afterwards. And I, I just did my 90 days when going through my uh, Warrior Path training. Because it's not just the seven-day in-resident course. It keeps up for three months afterwards with daily videos uh, that are pushed. Um, <clears throat> use an app on your phone with the chat capability. And we send the videos, the chats, you know, support groups there, uh, which is great. So it's not just for seven days and CLA to take care. And then every two weeks we have a, <clears throat> a Zoom conference uh, with the people that went to that course. So you get to see everybody, see how everybody's doing, follow up. That's the great thing. So some of these um, statistics are taken from the surveys themselves. I'll let you take a look at let those for a second. <coughs> <clears throat> what it's really shown us is that, you know, the symptoms of PTS are going down uh, in the folks that go through our course. And then their personal strength, their personal relationships, post-traumatic growth is going up by huge numbers there. So there used to be an 18 month long program follow-up. It has been shrunk to 90 days. Uh, and then we have a good quote from Leon Lott there, uh, <clears throat> you know, what, what, his, what the program has done for his law enforcement folks. So I'm going to talk, talk about some of the things with post-traumatic um, growth. So the first you know, piece of it is the education. It's making people sure, ensure they have the right perspective uh, on what's going, you know, on understanding what's going on, you know, and understand that they have choice in life. And it, nothing can really be taken from us. So that is one of the huge things is going through the courses, the education portion of it. And the next is the regulation. So you can see that triangle there on the top right, um, you know, it's part of, comprised of three parts, your mental health, your physical health, and then your financial health as well. And then the middle, your, your spiritual strength, whether that's, you know, whatever beliefs you are, uh, but that kind of keeps it all together. But it regulates our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. Uh, we teach a lot of things here on, again, re responding versus reacting. 
And then, you know, trying to have a, you have a light switch. Some people are angry, switch it on, switch it off. But we try to have a dimmer here to where they can really control, <clears throat> control themselves a lot more. So it's a lot of the training focuses on that. And then there's a disclosure aspect of it and really making peace with the past. So we have the, the people coming through the course here lay out, you know, their trauma going through childhood, <clears throat> which is where most of the people who suffer from PTSD have it from. They have some kind of childhood trauma. They've got away from it by joining the military, going to law enforcement. They experienced more trauma and then they got out of the military <clears throat> and lost that structure and organization. And now they're just really just struggling with life, uh, whether it's marriages or relationships with children. You know, that is a real thing. So we talk about making peace with the past and, um, you know, tell them, hey, a lot of stuff you were trained on is some of the sim symptoms that you're having, like I talked about earlier. Um, so they get to disclose some of that within the group, and it, it's a safe setting. Uh, and it's a beautiful place here. And you can see the picture there. Uh, there's a female warrior path class that came through and with some of our guides there. Uh, so we do male and then female the next course. We try to keep that going. And we offer this program uh, 12 times a year. We're looking to expand to 18 uh, programs of Warrior Path every year. And we might even, we're probably going to get more if Lexington and Richland County uh, support us with those grants as well um, with these classes, that, these additional classes here. But you, so you come in as a bunch of strangers. So I'm going through the course and I was like, a lot of these guys got out 10, 12 years ago. And I just, I was out three weeks out of the military. So it was good for them to come together and be around fellow veterans. And uh, everybody comes in a stranger. For the most part and then leaves you know hugging and you know teary-eyed and you know keeping up with them so making great friends really bond with the people that you go through this course with so we talk about some of the, the first three phases there is education regulation disclosure and the fourth one is story you know the importance of telling your story uh we often tell the story about alfred noble the guy the peace prize peace, peace prize uh, guy who developed that program you know somebody wrote an obituary about his brother but they used his life story in there and said you know, he, Alfred Noble was the creator of dynamite, which led to the deaths of thousands of soldiers. And, um, you, know, and you know, that was his story. He's like, this is my story. This is my obituary. So he rewrote his story and, uh, you know, developed the whole Nobel Peace Prize you know, contest. And that was his story. That's his life story. So that's what we focus on here is, hey, you know, you know, honor the, honor the past, but you got to look forward, not living life and, and look in the rearview mirror and just trying to live your best life. And uh, it's giving you back passion and purpose. And, um, and, and a lot of, we've had a lot of parents come through and say, hey, in, in individuals, like you gave purpose back to my son or daughter. You gave them passion in life. And it, it's just really rewarding when you hear those comments coming from not only the, the folks that come through here, but their family members and loved ones. Uh, David, uh, which uh, screen are you on? The one I see is Warrior Pass Proves and Re Proven Results. Right. Have you gone yep. to another one? Nope, no, I'm still in this oh, one here. Okay. Uh, you mentioned yeah. education. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have a slide for the, the, okay. the five aspects of it, but uh, but I'm um, this was kind of talking about. And the, the, the last thing was service. There, uh, you can't see it, but uh, really just you know going back and using your struggle to help enrich others. So everybody here that's a path guide, they are helping others, uh, and that is their you know that is their service to continue and help other folks out. Um, so those are the big pieces there. And then the benefits of, of utilizing our, our services here is a peaceful place for healing, uh, ex, you know, experience post-traumatic growth. We're not about suicide prevention. That's not, you know, our thing, but we've had people come through our programs with suicide letters in their wallets and then around a campfire, um, you know, throw that letter in the fire you know, a couple of days in and tell us at the end, you know, what they had in their, you know, have to, what they had in their wallet. So, and I had a roommate. He went through the program. He was had suicidal ideations, you know, ideations coming through the course, but he came out stronger and, and better on the other end. And I think his wife had him and his wife had just broke up the, the day before. And I think if he didn't come through the course, he might have potentially committed suicide. So it, it does it does do that, even though it's not one of our our main you know facets of our program. And like I talk about more empathy from first responders um, and then coming here, you know, community of like minded people. So a lot of people come through our programs. They help their volunteers to help facilitate the programs. Uh, a lot of folks coming through here have better relationships at, at work and at home. And then you know, between social media and whatnot, we figure each word path graduate impacts about 400 other people in one way or the other. So this positive energy is being you know, transferred about 400 other folks. And um, 
and a lot of things we teach here are just things we've been doing for 2000 years. I mean, veterans and first responders, we don't own the market on trauma. There are plenty of people listening in, in the New York Rotary Club and your district that are suffering from something um, or, and they're struggling every day. And so we don't own that. But so we focus on things throughout the seven days of just, hey, having three to five people in your life that you're close to, the positive relationships, having those three to five in there. Um, the importance of just exercise, the importance of going out and just taking a walk in nature, of sitting around a campfire and, you know, just talking with your family. And because, you know, for thousands of years, we sat around a campfire, we didn't sit around a TV. Uh, we asked the guys to put their cell, the guys and girls to put their cell phones away while they're here this week. You know, they can check it at night, but while they're going through the training, put their cell phones away, which is, ended up being quite a, a good experience, just being disconnected and offline uh, for most of the day. So the importance of eating right. Uh, the importance of sitting around a table and having a conversation during dinner. So it, it's a lot of these things that humans have been doing for thousands of years that we're really just reiterating in this training here um, that, that are wellness practices. Uh, so they go home with better practices. They have better tools to go and readdress the challenges in their life. And we even have one module where they prepare uh, to go home and have a you know, very difficult conversation with a loved one. And they kind of rehearse it. So the role playing, you're, you're yourself. And then one of your other students is, you know, who are you going to talk to? And then kind of reverse the roles and, uh, you know, have a conversation. But it's training, getting you ready to go back out. So we call it the bubble. Some folks are really nervous about going back home at, towards the end of the, you know, or tend the, towards the end of the class. And uh, they're just nervous about kind of reintegrating because they are in a bubble for about seven days. And that's why we prepare them when they go back home. And that's why we keep up with them with our Zoom sessions every two weeks. And um, that's some of the, the great things. I know I got a few more minutes here. I just wanna, how can you support? You know, how can you help us? First, we just tell people about what we do here. Um, you know, go to our website, a link there for the website. And tell it, if you know any veterans or first responders out there, and I'm sure most of you do, um, who are struggling, um, let them know they're out there. Tell them to check out our website and sign up for Warrior Path or some, you know, live in the Columbia area, use some of our services. Uh, for Warrior Path, they can come from anywhere. People, we fly people in uh, to the program, but most do come from uh, South Carolina. Uh, but for the local services, you know, the yoga and the Tai Chi and the equine therapy, most, most of those are local. And, you know, we use, utilize those. Check out our website, um, see what we offer there, when our times are. Um, sign up for our newsletter. That will get you on the volunteer. You'll get to know what's going on every month. And we have uh, other events and volunteer opportunities. And uh, also, if you want to come out for a tour, I'll be, just reach out to me. Um, Mary uh, has my contact information. And I'll, uh, I'll give you a tour, show you around the Big Red Barn, learn more about what we do. I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, like I talked about before, we look for volunteers. You can come out and volunteer in the kitchen or, or have a, a group uh, come out volunteer event. Um, support some of our fundraising events. So we did a fall jam concert. We had Chris Lane out in Secura Park a couple of weeks ago. Maybe you heard about it. Um, but you know, the big fundraising events. We do some golf tournament nonprofit. You know, non. I go to the golf tournaments, concerts. We're looking at potential doing oyster roast in the future and some other events to help with summer fundraising. So we're always looking for people to come and support our events. We have a text to give line. The number's right there. Or you could just you know donate online uh, through our website and. I'll, uh, I'll pause there for, for any questions. And oh, here's my contact information as well. Okay, right excellent. Thank you, David. Yeah. Uh, right. There were a few questions. I think you basically covered most of any of the questions that did come up. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about this one. Did, do you actually graduate from the programs or can you come as long and as often as you like? And you did mention like the 90 day follow up and the weekly or two week bi weekly Zooms and such. Is that the follow up? So um, that is the follow-up. So yes, it's a seven-day program. We haven't had anybody, you know, try to come through twice um, because it is so backlogged. Trying to give the opportunity to more folks to come through. Gotcha. And, and um, so yeah, it's, it's the seven days, and then the, the follow-ups there for nineties. And but yeah, they do graduate. You know, they we have a little ceremony at the end. They're initiated in, into it. So the the last dinner there, everybody eats together. Uh, before it separates the guides and the students uh, eating separately. And then at the end is initiation, a barbecue type event um, where they're, they're part of the, they're, they're part of alumni, just like everybody else and everybody's you know, equal. 
and getting the word out to the folks. You mentioned you're really backlogged, so maybe that's not something you want to do too much of because you have so many folks backing up. But right. how do you actually reach out to veterans and first responders? Right. So with the first responders, we were kind of going out to doing out to the leadership. So the police chiefs, and you know, I have relationships with them, the fire chiefs. Um, so they're aware of what we're doing here. Um, through our fundraising events, you know, we put a bunch of testimonials uh, on the screen you know, between the, the singers going up there. Uh, so they're aware of, of what we do here. Uh, our newsletter, our website, our social media is a huge uh, aspect to getting the word out on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, I have a Twitter account, you know, LinkedIn. So we have a lot of use of social media trying to get the, the word out for sure. Uh, to reach out to veterans and, and first responders. And so, yeah, we are backlogged in the warrior path, uh, but we do have some capacity to have more people come through our other programs. Uh, equine therapy is not that backlogged at all. And uh, some our numbers are typically pretty low uh, for the yoga and, and the Thai chi. So we can definitely fit more people into those programs that want to attend. And a, a question also, and you may not be able to answer this, but is there any understanding of why some veterans seem to suffer much more than others, but they've both had similar experiences, for example. Yeah, so that was that's one of the things where uh, at Boulder Crest, you know, Ken Folk, he was the, the founder of that. I don't think I said his name earlier, but, you know, he was going to the hospital and, and you know, visiting some of the folks had lost limbs or, and, and, or, and a lot of those guys didn't suffer from PTSD, where you think somebody lost an arm or a leg that, you know, to be more apt to, and he's very curious why, you know, why some people with no injuries suffer the most. And um, yeah, I mean, a lot has to do with the, um, you know, how they grew up. Like I talked about before, obviously, you know, some people had a lot of childhood stress. The, the females, there's, there's a lot of sexual trauma as well, not as a childhood, but even the military, uh, some have gone through that. Um, but no, it's not a, it's, a, it's a tough one to answer. It's just a lot of, some people have, I think it's a support group and the tools. Um, if you look at the Hanoi Hilton, you know, those, those folks, those POWs that went through there, it was the leadership, it was the group, it was the discipline um, that kept everybody together uh, through years of, of the torturous abuse. Um, and that kind of made them a stronger group uh, for sure. Uh, versus where, you know, the rest of the Vietnam War, I think it was like 30 or 40% had a PTSD mm -hmm. challenge. So no, it's, it's tough to explain why some people have it and some, some people don't. Okay. But, but there is, there is some studies on, yeah. I think we'll, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, David, that is very, very interesting. Uh, I just one real quickie for me personally, how did you get from three weeks retired into this <laughs> program? Like, boom, how that had come about. Right. So I knew I was retiring and um, I just, I was like, you know, I don't feel like working for the government anymore. Um, I spent most of my career working top secret plans that none of you want to see ever see be executed, nor do I. And uh, I just wanted a job where I felt more productive. I could see the results of my work uh, versus, you know, a bunch of PowerPoint slides and plans on a shelf. Though some of those plans almost came to fruition a couple of years ago um, <clears throat> with Iran. But um, no, it's just an opportunity. I was uh, made a note. I had a friend. Um, he had told me about this executive director position opening up here at the Big Red Barn Tree. I went to the interview process, checked it out. Uh, Love the fact, like I talked about, it helps first responders out because uh, my, my father really uh, struggled. And, and obviously, you know, I've seen a lot of my fellow, you know, active duty folks struggle as well. And then you just hear the stories and, and the numbers. Um, and then and I, and I hear more of it here of, of how, how bad some people are really struggling out there. So it feels good to, to help people and give back. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. David, this was very, very interesting. Um, I hope many more folks have an opportunity to actually attend and take some of your courses. I think that wraps up the questions for us. Mary will have this record it. She will post it on our YouTube account and send you that information as well. And I think we get quite a bit more folks, you know, catching up on Facebook, catching up on YouTube that are mm -hmm. able to attend our, you know, our sessions live. So we do appreciate your doing this. Um, the program itself just looks fantastic. It really, it really does. Is. And anytime you get horses involved, it's got to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> so 
with that, we'll wrap it up. And uh, I thank you so much, David and Mary. Thank you for the arrangements. Leon, Erica, thank you for attending. And we will see you the first Monday in December. That'll be the next session. Thank you much, David. Thank you. That's all Appreciate for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.